we have produced a short introduction um, of the of the group and the purpose of of this exercise, which is very much linked to the governance, and it's specifically linked to how this governing structure can support countries in the development of the national cholera elimination plans, what we call the NCPs. So I just have a few slides of introduction and then we will split into, into groups. Uh, we'll not go through <laughs> in many details about the cholera toolbox, but uh, we know that um, these are the, are the elements that a, a national cholera elimination plan should have including a, an overarching box that closes uh, the, the whole technical part, which is the, the leadership and the coordination. And we know that the, the global roadmap, um, which was launched in 2017, defines how the, these tools should be used across three different dimensions. The first dimension is the axis one, which is the emergency response part of, of uh, controlling cholera, which of course is, is very much needed for this epidemic uh, prone disease. But we also know, and the cholera roadmap uh, tells us that if we st um, stick to that axis, we will be doing this forever. So the, the other dimension is the, the intervention in, uh, to control endemic cholera in those hotspots with multisectoral interventions. Um, those hotspots are the areas that see cholera uh, year after year, and um, where we, if we improve uh, the, the infrastructure multisectorally, we would break transmission to, to the other areas and avoid outbreaks. And then there's the, the third dimension, which is the more theoretical, metaphysical dimension, which is the, the effective coordination. And that was um, both at global level, but especially at, at country level. And this is a, a very nice strategy, <laughs> but the, question, the big question is how do we go from these nice uh, concepts to actually uh, produce national cholera elimination plans in those countries that are targeted uh, by, the, by the roadmap. And for this, the GTFCC has developed uh, what we call the NCP framework, which is a uh, uh, informal, it's also called the cookbook, uh, which is a, a series of uh, guidance and recommendations to countries on how to actually build these uh, national cholera elimination plans. And this document, which has been uh, circulated in several iterations to most of you here, contains, of course, the key technical elements and the activities that should be considered, the different uh, examples of how this can be achieved, different tools uh, is linked to the technical guidance that, uh, that we have been producing in these uh, five years of, uh, of revitalization. And it's supposed to work as a resource document, <laughs> as, I, as I said, as a cookbook to, to uh, prepare these uh, national cholera elimination plans. And in principle, these uh, this national cholera elimination plans should be, of course, country-led. <laughs> um, it's not an exercise that happens somewhere in Geneva or, or wherever, it is really an exercise that comes and originates for the country, from the country for the country, and is based on, on uh, uh, relevant data, a relevant situational analysis or at, the, at the country level. And of course, uh, it uh, is an exercise that is multisectoral and coordinated at the highest level. We know that we've seen many examples of the first NCPs that have been produced, um, and the uh, need to escalate this much above health, because we know that uh, a lot of the problems that, uh, a lot of the, um, of the elements of cholera control are not just about uh, providing health. It is about providing infrastructure. It is a development, a development uh, issue. And uh, it is a, it is a, a multi-year document. Um, so it's not a, a plan that you put in, like I said, in a shelf or maybe in a USB stick or, or in your spam folder, but it's um, something that um, is supposed to guide and to set the direction and is very dynamic for years to come. Ideally, by 2030, the country should have eliminated cholera. Some countries are even um, accelerating that goal and have goals of eliminating cholera by 2025 and it's definitely possible in certain countries. Mona, many of them here. Um, and 
Again, linked to this multi-year, uh, it is a plan that uh, has to be dynamic and adaptable. So the situational analysis, of course, is done at the beginning, but then it has to be uh, continuously updated, reported, to see how better the strategy can, can tackle and can evolve. And uh, uh, the process for this, it's uh, uh, both at country level. The country develops this, uh, these plans, and this is the most important uh, aspect, of course. And it originates with uh, having a political will and acknowledging that cholera is a problem and wanting to, 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 uh, to, to eliminate it. And then uh, there is this, the conduction, the exercise of doing a situational analysis and see where these hotspots are, where, where we would put uh, uh, multi-sectoral interventions. Once you have, uh, the countries do the situational analysis, then it, has about, it is about planning these multi-sectoral interventions and definition of the goals and milestones, etc., until the country has um, a national cholera elimination plan that is endorsed and, and validated. And this is just the, the first step, the most important one, of course. And the, the second step is, um, is uh, about how the GTFCC can then support the countries. Of course, the GTFCC partners will support in the, in the development, but then we have to have a, a more formalized mechanism by which the, the GTFCC reviews uh, these NCPs and constructively reviews them so that they are endorsed and fit for purpose and basically used as a, as a tool and as an advocacy tool to uh, channel the resources, both technically and uh, financial resources. So once it's prepared, the, the plan is uh, submitted, and then there is an independent review plan panel that uh, is convened that will review this and um, provide a practical review of this NCP um, and work um, hand in hand with the country on to see how to make it more uh, how to make it um, effective and, and, and practical. Once it is endorsed, then, of course, the plan is, is uh, implemented and, and monitored. Uh, the key steps, of course, are this process, this IRP process, this practical review, and then, of course, this endorsement, which is intended to be, we informally call it the GTFCC stamp, that then uh, facilitates the access to funds and, and technical support via, via the partners. Um, and and uh, the groups uh, will discuss uh, the, the elements of this. The first one is how the IRP should be uh, governed and the processes that, uh, that should entail uh, this review. Um, I will go, hopefully we all have compiled the, the survey and your, these slides were also shared yesterday, so I will go quickly in the interest of time and give space to the discussion. But the key principles of this uh, IRP is that it should be consistent, transparent, objective, independent, and it would work uh, under the hat, as we have see, just seen from the communication, uh, the, the presentation of, the, of Dominique, under the, the, the hat of the GTFCC steering committee. And uh, we will have to have a, a, a set of competencies, again, um, of course, being uh, uh, experts in, in cholera control, <laughs> um, a representation that is uh, geographically diverse um, with different organizations, strong programmatic experience, up to date with the scientific evidence and the GTFCC guidance, independent and, and objective. So that was the, the first group. Um, and uh, the, the second group will discuss, linked to that, which criteria should be used for the evaluation, for the, the practical review of these of this, uh, NCPs and which conditions should be, should be met. Uh, there's three uh, themes that are absolutely essential, the multi-sectoral approach, the fact that it has to be funded on a sound situational analysis, and that it has to have impact um, and feasibility by, by each of the, of the cholera control pillars. And then we can go more in, into more granularity about uh, what type of conditions we would need to, to endorse an NCP, what kind of, of things elements are ex uh, strictly necessary before we can proceed. <laughs> um, for example, if a country uh, is not, has an NCP that is not 
engaging all the sectors, but only one sector, then of course there will be a, some, a, a limitation of, of the plan and it, it will be very difficult or uh, let's say impossible to, for the GTFCC IRP to endorse it. And the endorsement, as we were saying, is, is a process to facilitate access to countries for financial support and, and technical support. And uh, last but not least, the, the third group will, uh, within this, this process, will also um, uh, decide and, and start to help us to, uh, define what type of uh, annual reporting should be required um, on a regular basis during the General Assembly um, uh, to document and monitor progress uh, or, um, towards the color elimination goal. And there's a set of, of criteria, again, pretty much in the same spirit, what is absolutely necessary to report and what is optional, and uh, with the aim to have um, a process that is less cumbersome for countries as, as possible, but at the same time effective. Um, this is the last slide. So for the f group work, we intended to have a, a, approximately a 50 minutes work. Um, you will see the results of the surveys, so that will be stand as the basis as a discussion, but that survey is, does, is not supposed to be set in stone, so the, the real aim is to have a, an open discussion, and that is supposed to just facilitate uh, the discussion, so hopefully uh, we have all filled it in.